Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. Again, please pardon my parents because I live in wonderful Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, which means I can't get a haircut, I can't go to the gym, but I can get a chemical peel. So ironically, I was able to get a chemical peel, but I can't get a haircut. Figure out that logic. Well, anyway, the show must go on. So today, we're going to do a follow-up to a video I recently did where I talked about ridiculous prices being paid for a lot of great at Atari 2600 games. Now, some of you guys reached out and you said, Sean, I don't think that market is in a speculative bubble at all. Now, remember guys, there's three markets in the antiques and collectibles trade that I continue to believe at present time are under the guise of a speculative bubble. And really there's more than three, but I'm just talking about the three newest markets of the trade. That's great at vintage video games, Magic the Gathering, and also Pokemon collectibles and products. If we want to talk about speculative bubbles in a larger sense, we could also include certain vintage comic books in that same mantra, meaning the market for vintage comic books has accelerated in value so much over the past 5, 10, 15 years that at present time, some of the prices are just not sustainable. That market will eventually undergo a correction. It'll probably happen within 5, 10, 15 years at least. Um, possibly the market could survive maybe 20 more years in this current circumstance. But I don't think the market is going to remain long term like it is. And that's where a lot of these speculators, unsophisticated investors are fooling themselves. Comic books are not comparable to the high-end art market, to the market for coins, for the market for historical documents, the market for high-end antiques. Those are not comparable markets. As such, that market will eventually go through some form of transformation, much like it did back when comic books became the it thing thanks to third-party grading and Marvel and DC unveiling their cinematic universes. Now, getting back to video games, we've got a problem developing in some of these markets. And I'm going to use a case in point and it really sucks because I really can't post a link to these auctions in the space below in the video description of this video because in order to view some of these auctions because they're previous auctions, you have to have a Heritage account. So I'm going to give you guys the lot numbers. I'm going to give you the auction numbers. And I'm going to even show you a way where if you want to search this information for yourself to make sure that you know that I'm giving you factual information on this channel, you can. So back on May 1st, 2020, literally a couple of months ago, less than two months ago, a 9.8 WADA graded Spider-Man game for the Atari 2600, which was released by Parker Brothers in 1982, sold for $9,000. That includes the buyer's premium. That's the whole shebang. The only thing the buyer's going to probably have to pay extra if it applies is going to be sales tax and shipping. That's not counted in the bid price when auction quotes a final bid price on heritage auctions, meaning the $9,000 is just the cost of the item with the buyer's premium. We always include the buyer's and premium in that cost because if this person goes to resell this or if a similar item is being sold on eBay, if the market is established and stable, that price would hold, meaning maybe on eBay it would sell for $9,200 or maybe on eBay it would sell for $8,750. You see what I mean? There is a variance there. But overall, if an item's worth $9,000 and that market is established and stable, all things being equal, that same item should sell on another established marketplace for $9,000. Now, this item has an A++ shrink wrap grade, meaning when WADA grades a graded factory sealed game, they assign a grade to the shrink wrap that's attached to that item. So A++ is a very high grade for the shrink wrap. So this item was probably pulled at one point from a factory seal case, which gets me on a little bit of a side rant here. There are tons of factory sealed Atari 2600 games still sitting in cases. A lot of this stuff was made, a lot of it was hoarded, and a lot of people during the late 1990s, believe it or not, were going back and they were buying cases of this stuff. I made a lot of money selling this stuff on eBay. Back, I said, between 1995 and 2005, there was a massive speculative bubble for this. 
I remember I was able to get factory sealed Atari games by the case for literally 70, 80, 90 cents a game in some cases. And a lot of that stuff I flipped for a tremendous amount of profit and I just invested it in mutual funds. Never even thought about it. Well, ironically, a lot of those cases are still out there. And a lot of these Parker Brother games that you guys think are quote unquote rare are very common. That's how this is happening. This is market manipulation, guys. So where am I going with this? Well, back on May 1st, 2020, the game sold for $9,000. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If you go back to that video where I talked about ridiculous prices being paid for WADA graded Atari 2600 games, you're going to see, or most of the comments were already deleted because people go back and they delete their comments because they don't want me calling out their inaccuracies on this channel. But there were comments, Sean, Atari is the first. You don't understand. This is going to be massive. This is going to be awesome. All these prices are legit. You don't know what you're talking about. This market is not in a speculative bubble. Well, then explain this to me. On June 15th, 2020, a Spider-Man graded by WADA Games in 9.8 with a factory sealed wrap condition of A++, exactly the same as the one that was sold in May 1st. I want to be very clear. There is nothing different grade-wise of this item that was sold on June 15th from the one that was sold for $9,000 on May 1st. The end auction price was $4,200. And let me give you the lot number. It is lot 15731, and the auction is 122024. That's how it's cataloged. So if you enter lot 15731 and you're registered on Heritage site, it should pull this lot up that sold for $4,200. If you want to compare it to the one that sold on May 1st for $9,000, that was lot 93012. Again, 93012, and it was part of auction 7229. Now, do you understand why I get frustrated when people who have the name of Pokemon Collector 59 come on this channel when I discuss economics, finance, and how to analyze these markets, and they leave a comment like, well, Sean, I can't believe you can't state an equilibrium price for a Sky Ridge booster box. How can I state an equilibrium price when the item in the past two years literally sold anywhere from $5,000 all the way up to $16,000? What am I supposed to do? Chart all the sales and take the average Why it's in the midst of a speculative bubble? The market's not stable, guys. It's not an established marketplace. Those of you that are buying great at games like this you get to pat yourself on the back. Because if you're the moron that paid $9,000 for this Spider-Man 1 in 9.8 condition on May 1st, please tell me what's so great about your copy that's different from the one that sold literally 45, 46 days later on June 15th for $4,200. So congratulations. Not only did you pay more than double the cost of that item, you also bought it in the midst of a speculative bubble where no market equilibrium can be established at present time. Now, I know what you're going to say. Some of you that are educated in finance and economics, Sean, that's not true. All you got to do is take the average of the items. The market is not stable. It doesn't matter. This is like going back to Germany uh, right before World War II with hyperinflation where you would try to buy a loaf of bread and the loaf of bread would literally be what? One trillion whatever currency they were using, marks or whatever it was equivalent to at that time, literally four hours later in the afternoon. How do you get a market equilibrium with people paying these stupid prices? Please explain that to me. I'm going to give you the answer. You cannot. The market is too new. This is why. If you do your research, and again, some of you have asked me how to analyze these markets. This is one way you can do it. Just sign up for a free Heritage Auctions account. I'm not saying you have to buy anything on Heritage Auctions. Again, my channel is not corporately sponsored. I do a business with Heritage Auctions. I have a good working relationship with them because I collect high-end coins, high-end currency, and certain other items that they sell on their site. I have also have consigned stuff to them before, either by myself or through clients that I've referred to them. 
So that being said, I do have a working relationship with them. But all you got to do is sign up for a free site and just start searching completed auction listings. And some of these auction listings, I'm going to be honest, that sell for a lower amount than another item, sometimes they're hidden on the site. So to find this one, I typed in WADA space Spider-Man, Spider hyphen man, and then I searched view past sales prices. And that's what pulled me on this list. Now, incidentally enough, there's also a WADA graded Spider-Man game for the Atari 2600, 9.6 condition, that sold on June 1st of this year, 2020, for $3,360. So you can see, we already have a little bit of a discrepancy here. Nobody knows what the hell a 9.6 or a 9.8 graded Spider-Man for the Atari 2600 should go for because there's too few graded and the people that are seeing them come onto the market are going, oh my gosh, that's a key item. I have to have it. And they're paying exorbitant prices. And I guarantee you guys, I'm going to state this clear as day. I bet you a lot of these people that are entering this market, paying these exorbitant prices for these games, are calling themselves investors. When you pay $9,000 for a game that literally sells again, same condition, same grade, literally, literally, 46 days later, for less than half of what you paid, you are not an investor. You are an unsophisticated Timmy who doesn't know what the hell he is doing. Please, if this is your idea of investing, please get yourself an index-based mutual fund. The collectibles marketplace is not for you. I would love to know your thoughts on this topic. Um, I'm curious to engage with some of you in the comment section below. Again, I can list the lot numbers in the video description, but I think if I post the link because you guys may not be signed into the Heritage website or app. If you click on it, it may come up in ballot. I will try to do whatever I can to give you all the information you need, though, for these two auctions so you can see what I mean. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate all your views and comments. Have a great day.